Hello, I'm Eric Apple, principal and founder of Eric Apple Law. Welcome to another edition of our blog pod. Today, we're looking at long-term care and insurance options. There may come a time when you or a family member require long-term care. This may be due to a chronic condition, trauma, or an illness limiting your ability to carry out basic self-care tasks called activities of daily living, or ADLs. ADLs include bathing, dressing, or eating. IADLs, or instrumental activities of daily living, include household chores, meal preparation, or managing money. Long-term care often involves the most intimate aspects of people's lives. What and when you eat, personal hygiene, getting dressed, and using the bathroom. So it's important to take time to consider your long-term care options and think about how you would like to be taken care of should such an event occur. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services estimates that approximately 70% of Americans over the age of 65 will require some type of long-term care during the course of their lives. Many people are surprised to learn that Medicare does not cover long-term custodial care or nursing homes, nor does it cover assisted living or adult daycare. Given the cost of such care, it makes sense to consider the best course of action in advance and how to obtain the care you might need without exhausting your life savings to pay for it. One option is long-term care insurance. If this is the route appropriate for you, there are key factors to consider when purchasing a long-term care insurance policy. Here are five key points to think about when weighing long-term care insurance. First, your age and health matter. The younger you are when you purchase your long-term care insurance, the less expensive it will be. Unfortunately, if you have conditions such as diabetes or heart disease, your application might be rejected or the cost of coverage may be significantly higher. Secondly, it's better to have some coverage than none at all. The very best of plans, such as those that adjust for inflation or cover the widest range of services, may end up being prohibitively expensive. Experts advise that it is better to have a policy than not have one, especially policies that have the option to add services in the future. Next, It is incredibly important to know exactly what services are provided by your policy and just as importantly, what services are not covered. Asking questions and reading the fine print will help you understand if the policy is right for you and meets the criteria you've set for your long-term care. Just as you should understand what is and what is not included in your coverage, you should also take note of when the coverage begins. You may assume that from the time you sign up or make your first payment, you're covered. But this may not be the case. Most policies have what is known as a waiting period. During the waiting period, you will have to pay for services on your own before the policy kicks in. As you might expect, the shorter the policy's waiting period, the more expensive the policy will be. Lastly, if you are considering long-term care insurance and buy your policy through an agent, Ask these three questions. How long have you been selling long-term care insurance? How many policies have you sold? If it's fewer than 100, that may not be enough. And finally, how many insurers do you work with? The minimum should be at least three to four. Before you make any decisions about long-term care, talk to someone you trust to understand more about other long-term care services, be it a family member, a doctor, or trusted insurance professional. In the meantime, please visit our website at ericapplelaw.com where you can drop us a note, give us a call, or learn more about estate planning. And until next time, please like, subscribe, and share so we can make sure everyone is covered for the long term.